So I think this Hello Kitty uh, price crash down to it was $48, like $48.99, $48, I think. Uh, there was a recent video that Umu put out about that where uh, Max TCG was putting out tons of them. And those are have now left TCG Player. Now they're selling for like $59.99. Uh, last I checked, something like that, back up to around $60. And, you know, it's interesting to kind of see this huge crash in Hello Kitty. I think it's uh, indicative of... I, I think there's a big issue, you know, again, with the demographic um, uh, inaccuracy with that product and uh, with Hello Kitty being what it is and who the demographic of MetaZoo is. I think there's an inconsistency there, but I res I, res I got to say, I respect the decision to try it. Uh, I feel like maybe there it was risky, but given the, the popularity of Hello Kitty, maybe, you know, I can, I can understand it, but I think there's going to be a lot of kind of clawing back to uh, gain a consistent identity again for MetaZoo. But I think there's there's a lot of opportunity in 2024 just in the space uh, in general. So I'm going to talk about that today. Uh, first of all, I, I, wanted, I thought it was uh, very interesting. If you watch Rudy's deleted video, what he said about uh, MetaZoo. So the last thing I want to kind of say about them uh, is, you know, he what he, he pointed out, what he said marked the collapse is, and you can watch this video has been uploaded uh, uh, since it's been deleted on other channels, but he said it was the seeing the early stuff come to market, or I, I believe he said maybe the seeing the early sellers or the early adopters finally fold and start to sell their products, seeing the price go down on those early items. Uh, it seems to be what Rudy was um, uh, pointing to as being sort of the the indication of the collapse of the whole thing, and he was you know not not positive about that. And so, I, and I agree. I think we've been seeing this gradual kind of fall since wilderness, and I think it's a larger issue too. You know, it wasn't just the the mismatch of the the Hello Kitty with the demographics. It was. Uh, I think a larger problem of saturation with products. And that's just not, that's not just a MetaZoo problem too. You know, it's, it was saturation in the face of a changing economic environment. And you can see an MTG. I mean, MTG has just a glut of products with this, with all the secret layers and, you know, the collector's boxes, the draft boxes, the, the play boosters now. I mean, it's just so overwhelming. It's way too much to think about. I feel like you don't get quite that saturation with Pokemon. You know, there's kind of still an emphasis on the core sets. They don't have like a collector's Pokemon booster. It's just a booster, right? It's just the booster. And then they have the ETBs and the different products. But it's it's not too much to think about for the collector. So I, I think Zoo, you know, 2024 will be interesting. I think that they will continue to carry their niche audience. Uh, the people who are really, really dedicated are going to buy it no matter what, you know, but uh, I think it, they're going to need to really work on being more consistent with their identity, focus on their audience, who their audience is, and, and what's going to sell to that audience. And maybe they'll figure that out and, um, you know, they'll be able to kind of get back on track and make a stronger product and uh, game for their core fans. I think that would be great. Uh, and so I wish them the best with that. But I, I don't think that they're really in a more broad, in a more broad uh, uh, perspective, I don't think they're going to be a key player anymore in terms of opportunity uh, in the TCG space. And I, I think it's in a different area. Now, first of all, I am now a Rudy patron. So I I signed up right at the end of December and uh, there are no more slots as of today when I made this video, when I just before this video, I went and checked. There are no more slots uh, for the pat Patreon there. And I think there's opportunity in sorcery. So I'd like to get in on whatever the next sorcery product is potentially, you know, you don't know what kind of promos or collaborations he's going to be doing with sorcery. And if you look at the market, you know, across the board for TCGs has been bad, but sorcery has been doing phenomenally. You know, um, I sold some alpha starters and I, I profited on those. And I, you know, it's just, it's incredible to see, the, the high prices on sorcery in the midst of this environment. And it seems like they're keeping print runs low. I've seen some complaints about that, that people want them to make more boxes and, you know, they're not player friendly because everything's expensive. And they're not doing a lot of games, but 
I think it's a niche game. And, you know, I think maybe they know that they're, you know, a niche game. And, and I, I mean, Rudy said they're supposed to be like a specialty release every year and it's not supposed to be a large supply. I don't think they're supposed to, they're not trying to be like flesh and blood and make tons and tons of product to make a big organized play thing. I don't think that's what, they want or what people want it to be. I think they just like maybe collecting it and, and playing it in a casual way. It doesn't need to have like a Grand Prix tour and all of this kind of stuff. Um, I think that the attraction to it is that it is this throwback thing that does harken back to early magic and is just it's separating itself. It's not trying to compete in that traditional way. And that's a good thing for it. I hope they don't change avenues and uh, try to, you know, do tons of booster boxes and all that kind of thing. So hopefully that remains a specialty product is desired as a specialty product. So I don't want to see a lot of supply on it. I think it's great, uh, that it's more niche and that is desired and that it, it's high price reflecting its desirability. So that's just my opinion on that. Uh, so I think there's gonna be opportunity for there. And my other one, uh, that I think is going to be a really good opportunity is not related to being a Rudy patron. I think, uh, you know, for me, it's just it's a fun journey to be a part of uh, the Rudy, you know, being a patron because, you know, I watched the YouTube space and of course he's a huge player, you know, a, a part of uh, the TCG finance space, the TGCG space. I'm not even planning on really buying magic. Uh, I just kind of want to have, you know, my slot that. You know, I, I have reserved for me if there's something that comes out of promo that I'm interested in, a product that I like that he takes up, you know, he gets distribution for whatever that I want to make sure that I have a place there um, so that I can participate if I want to do so. And maybe there'll be a month or several months where I don't buy anything because it's just magic or something or Weiss or whatever. Uh, but, you know, you never know what he's got up his sleeves and, you know, he wants to make patrons happy and. Uh, there might be a, a pretty cool promo opportunity at some point. So uh, that was my play for getting into 2024, feeling a little bit optimistic is becoming a Rudy patron. My other uh, point of optimism is going to be Lorcana. So, you know, you know, Rudy doesn't have Lorcana right now. Um, I guess he never will. I don't I don't know. I know he's not a big fan of Lorcana, I guess, from what he's talked about it. But. You know, from the last time I made my Lorcana video, um, I guess the sealed stuff is down a little bit. I'm not looking at market across the board, but Lor Elsa Enchanted PSA 10s are up. You know, I know the raw cards are down, but they're not guaranteed to be a PSA 10. And when I was buying them, they were, I was doing around $1,000 and they dipped down to 900 some odd. And when the big supply hit the market of more boxes, you know, when uh, Ravensburger ratcheted up the supply. And now you're looking at eBay and these... PSA 10 Enchanted Elsas are up. They're like $1,400, $1,500, something like that. I mean, um, they are on the rise despite the supply uh, dump, I guess you could call it, all the supply hitting the market. And maybe they won't stay that way. Maybe that's a temporary thing. You know, there was uh, Lorcana Goons is a YouTuber who talked about, uh, I saw his thumbnail, like there's a, a post-Christmas uh, uh, surge in sales or something. Maybe that. Maybe it'll be a short, you know, uh, bump. We'll see. But I do feel good about Lorcana. You know, uh, I think the cards look good. It's such a strong name brand and uh, it is not a saturation of products. You know, is it's they've got their boosters. They've got their like hundred anniversary collector set. And now they're going to do another set and they're focused on competitive play. And in every, it's so easy to understand and digest just what the product is. And I think that's great. I think that's good for Lorcana and they're using the Disney name well. And, you know, I've, I've said uh, before, I think if Disney can't do it with Lorcana, what TCG can, you know, I mean, it, what more could you ask for? It's a good game, attractive, hard to get, desirable chase cards. And it's based on the Disney property. I mean, it's just got so much firing for it. And, and it can, if it can survive this huge supply you know, putting out all this supply and uh, people are still picking up. It's getting absorbed. There is demand for the game. It continues. What more can you ask for? You know, I mean, if it doesn't work at that point, I mean, just, you know, forget about it. Just, you know, don't even worry about it anymore. What, else, what other opportunities are going to be? So I think there's going to be sorcery. And I think Lorcana, those are my two big picks for 2024. You know, I hope there's success in other games and uh, people figure out their, uh, their supply, the, their product saturation, their identity, all of this stuff. And so the fans can just enjoy the games and, you know, they can have a, a, a good, strong place in the space. But those are my two picks. I'm very excited uh, to see what happens with those two this year. And I'm excited to be a Rudy patron and see what uh, this 2024 is like 
versus the 2023 we just exited. All right, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Thank you.